Well, the SNP leader and Scotland's First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, joins us now. Nicola Sturgeon, chaos in Libya. Do you have any confidence that the Lord Advocate's request for assistance from the Libyans will in any way result in a trial here in Scotland? Well, I hope so, and that's the determination, if it proves possible. The possibility of people other than al Megrahi being involved in the Lockerbie bombing has never been ruled out, and the Crown Office has always said that they would follow the evidence and follow up any leads. The Lord Advocate has been very clear about that. So that's why I think today's development is interesting and indeed positive. Of course, we have to now wait and see what happens Now, on to the business of this conference. Um, the government in Westminster announced a new new era of devolution this very week, uh, that there's going to be powers given to you to vary the benefit system, vary the income tax system, so that you can do precisely what you want. Do you believe it? Well, I don't know yet. We have to wait and see the detail. We've heard vague assurances, but we haven't seen anything in black and white. And I guess what makes me just a little bit cautious is that before uh, the Westminster summer recess, the SNP put forward amendment after amendment after amendment to the Scotland Bill, proposing some of these things, and each and every one of them was voted down by the Conservative government. So if they have changed their tune, I welcome that, but I think we will wait to see the detail. Uh, whatever comes, though, in my view, it's not enough, but we will use whatever powers we have at any time. Well, that's the point I was going to pick up. I mean, how ready are you, in fact, to make profound changes that might alter the inequality, which is grave in Scotland, just as it is in much of the rest of the United Kingdom, and indeed uh, alleviate poverty? Well, we will do that using whatever powers and whatever resources we have at our disposal. That's what we do right now. So, right now, uh, even without welfare powers, my government spends more than 100 million pounds every year trying to mitigate some of the impact of the Conservatives welfare cuts so because of investment we're making even although we don't have power over it nobody in Scotland is having to pay the bedroom tax we've established a Scottish welfare fund so the record we have and all of the evidence says we use our powers well and we'll use any additional powers well too but nevertheless that there are criticisms I mean for example the fact that uh, elderly patients and, and normal patients indeed uh, are, are, are have gone up unable to go home, 200,000 in 2011, 620,000 unable to go home on time uh, in the present year. Well, we have made progress in reducing delayed discharges, which is what you're talking about. Like, I think you know, the NHS faces changing demographics and ever-increasing demand. We've got to make sure we equip the NHS for that. But if I look at 2007 when the SNP took office, and I know it well because I was health secretary at the time, you know, the target waiting time for inpatient and day case treatment in Scotland was 18 weeks. 85% of people were seen within that target. Today, the target is 12 weeks and 95% of people are seen within that target. So we've made considerable progress, but we're determined to go further and do even better. Now, is it your ambition? I know you don't know what you're going to get, but is it your ambition to alleviate the consequences of the effects of the benefit cuts on lowest paid workers? I want to alleviate the impact of welfare cuts as much as I can. I'm not going to uh, promise that we can do that completely because what we are getting, and remember I've said we have to see the detail, will be limited welfare powers and very, very limited taxation powers. So I'm not going to promise things I can't deliver, but the record of the SNP government thus far has been to do whatever we can to alleviate the impact on the vulnerable and on working families that have been hit very hard, and that's what we we'll to And if you get the money, do. how would it be paid for? Supposing you get about, a, would sure. it be paid by raising income tax? Well, we will do what we've always done as a government. You know, I lead a government now, Alex Salmond led it before me, that has balanced the books every single year we've been in government. Now, people say we don't have a choice, but nevertheless, that takes a lot of discipline. We look at our priorities, we set our priorities, and we manage our budget to deliver them. Now, even with additional powers, that's still the approach we'll take to government. It's a responsible, good government approach, but one that is very firmly focused on helping those who need it most. Now, of course, you are pro-European. You're, will you campaign unequivocally for Britain to stay yes. in Europe? You say yes, but of course, by doing so, you could be delaying the opportunity but to I... have <laughs> another referendum which would uh, result in independence. But I act as a politician. I know this may be difficult it's for people to believe. It's quite a schizophrenic situation. Well, do you know what? I, I 
I judge all my actions as best I can based on what I think is best for the country at any given time, not on some kind of Machiavellian judgment of what's in my own best interest. I think it would be wrong for Scotland and the UK to leave the European Union. I don't think it's perfect as an institution. I think it's right for reform in many ways. But I think our interests are best served by being within it. That's why I'll campaign for Scotland and the UK to stay in.